Today we are going to be building the mobile bacon browser. We're going to do it without writing any code. When we're done, it will run on both Android and iOS, and it will put a big strip of bacon over the top of any web page we visit. And it is crazy simple to make. Let's begin. First of all, we are going to utilize the excellent service called Bakealicious. Bakealicious does just what we talked about. It takes a big strip of bacon and puts it over a web page. Very convenient. Now, how do we build the iOS and Android version? Well, we open up Illumination Software Creator here. Here's the default project. You notice three blocks. An application block, which says, hey, I'm an application and I just started. A quit application block that says, hey, stop running this stupid application. And a window block. This is a window. You can put buttons on here. And in fact, we are going to. So simply double click the window block or go over here and click the design window button with the window block selected and up pops the illumination window editor. Now, first what we're gonna wanna do is go here and where it says design four, there's a little drop-down box. And you see if we click it, it shows Android, Python, Adobe Flex, iOS, HTML5. It's got a lot of options there. In Illumination, you can create the same application without writing any code, of course, that runs on a bunch of different platforms. Of course, an application doesn't really work the same on a web page as it does on, say, an iPhone. You want the UI to be a little different. You want to make the buttons a little different size, maybe even place in an entirely different way. Within Illumination here, you can simply lay out your UI differently for each platform without having to change any of the logic, which is very cool. For now, we're just going to select Android since we're going to be working with Android right now. Uh, now, within a web browser, there's three distinct controls that we're going to want to use. One is going to be a web browser control. So from here on the left, there's a list of controls. We're going to drag web browser over to the window area here. We'll resize it in a moment. We're also going to want a text box. You're going to want to want somewhere to be able to put in the URL that you want to browse to. So let's go ahead and drag that to the window. And then, of course, we'll want a button, something that says, hey, go to that URL I just typed in. Okay, so now that we've got all these in place, let's go ahead and resize our controls so they look good. Now, since we're building this for Android, one thing worth noting is that Android controls tend to look better a little larger than, say, on a desktop platform, whereas the height of a text box or a button could be just simply 22 pixels on a desktop platform. On an Android device, you're going to want it to be more like 40, and that may seem very large, but it looks really about right. It makes it easier to utilize with a finger. Uh, we're going to do that for the button as well. We're just going to go ahead and make both of them 40 here. Uh, and we'll go ahead and resize this a little bit here so that it looks right. And uh, away we go. Now let's take the button and let's go ahead and change the text property of the button to something like go because we want it to go. And let's go ahead and set a default URL in the text box. So select the text box, go over here to the text property, and let's change it to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash say, uh, oh, I don't know, www.lunduke.com. But you can use any domain name you like. Now let's go ahead and resize the web browser to fit the window. We'll go like this and we'll make it pretty big. You can make it really small if you want to. You can make it big. You can do whatever you want, but I'm going to go ahead and make it pretty big. Now, I'm utilizing Illumination Software Creator version 5 here, which is currently in beta. This same application will work exactly the same way on a, the current version of Illumination Software Creator uh, version 4.3. The one thing that using version 5 will give you in this particular case is that the UI will be dynamically resizable. So this UI will look roughly the same whether you're using a big giant iPad with a retina display or a very, very small first generation iPhone or one of 18,000 Android devices. Well, what we can do in version 5 is simply select the control we want to do and set how it is locked. You see over here on the properties list on the last lock left, right, top, and bottom options. By default, they're all set to false. Now, what this means is if this UI, if this window is resized to something larger, such as if it was run on an iPad or a high-resolution Android tablet, that control is not going to resize with the window. It's going to remain the same. But we want it to resize. So what we're going to go ahead and do is change these options to true. And what this basically says is we want to lock the distance from that edge of the control 
to the window. So we're saying it is currently, say, two pixels from the bottom of the window. Well, we want to lock it so it's always two pixels from the bottom, two pixels from the top, two pixels from the right, two pixels from the left. What, whatever it's currently at, we want to lock it in place. That way it resizes appropriately. And let's go ahead and do that for the text control and the go button as well. Now for the text control, we're going to want to lock it to the left lock it to the top and lock it to the right but not lock it to the bottom so as the window gets taller the text control is not going to be resized to become taller itself and we're going to do the same thing for the go button as well except we're going to lock it to the right and to the top but not to the left or the bottom and what we're saying is we don't want to resize the go button we just want to make sure it's always pinned to the top right of the screen all right now that we've got our ui designed let's go ahead and click ok I'm going to note that that is probably the most work that's going to be involved in creating this super simple application. Now, you'll notice in Illumination Software Creator, it really doesn't matter where you put things. I can move windows all over the place, and the application is going to run exactly the same way. Okay, let's build the logic here. First of all, we're going to want to build some variables. So let's uh, add a new variable. On the bottom left-hand screen, left-hand side of the screen, you'll see the variable list. Hit the little plus button below it, and up will pop the new variable dialog. And let's go ahead and create a few. Uh, first, we're going to want one that stores the URL. Well, let's just call it the URL, just for kicks and giggles. Let's click OK. We'll make sure it's a text variable because we need some text variables. And let's create another variable. And let's create this one called uh, bacon. Hold on, you have to actually spell bacon correctly. There we go. Now what this one's going to be is the URL to the Bakelicious service. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. Well, heck, let's just bring it up and copy and paste. Boom. There we go. Bakelicious. And this is just the Bakelicious domain. Okay. Now let's go ahead and build the basic logic here. First of all, we're going to want to get the URL that the user has typed. So we'll bring in a get text box block and bring it to uh, wherever you like. Just kind of drag it on over. And you'll find that in the user interface section of the block list on the left-hand side. Uh, and then we're also going to want, uh, well, let's just start with that. Get text box. On this window, window, put the text from this control text box we didn't give it a very interesting name but we can name it whatever we want in this variable the URL nice and simple basically it just says hey go to this text control grab the text from it and put it in this text variable nice and simple now when we click the button we're gonna want to do that so over here in the window you will notice it says button clicked well in this little block over here this little circle over here on the right hand side you can drag from that circle to the input circle of the get text box block that you've just dragged in. Now, when we click that button that says go, it'll grab that text, put it in the variable that we've created, and Bob's your uncle. That's pretty cool. Now, what do we want to do with it? Well, next, what we want to do is we want to combine the text together with the baconizing text. So let's go to the text section of the drop down on the left and there's a combined text block. Let's drag that combined text block over here to the window. All right, now you'll notice that when it's selected, the properties on the right say set this variable. Let's go the URL, because that's a good one to use, to this text, bacon, plus this text, the URL. Basically what we're saying is, let's add that baconizing text, the bacalicious domain, to the beginning of the URL that the user has entered. Nice and simple. Now we want to do that when the get text box is complete. So we drag from the get text box done output to the combined text input there. Nice and simple. Now we've got the URL we want to load. Now let's load it. Let's go back to the user interface section and in the drop down on the left. Scroll down to the set web browser block. Drag set web browser on in. Let's select it. And you notice the properties on the right say, on this window, window, because we only have one window. If we had more windows, it would show more windows, and we could name them whatever we wanted. But since we only have one, selecting it is very simple. Load this web browser, web browser, with the URL in this text variable, the URL. Nice and simple. Now let's go ahead and set the combined text done output and connect that up with the set web browser set input. And now we are, we're actually done. Let's go ahead and save the project.
Let's go ahead and build the app. Click the Build App toolbar and say Build Android. It's building. And now you see up comes a folder. This is a very interesting folder. There's a lot of files in it. What's really cool about Illumination Software Creator is that it actually builds the raw source for whatever target platform you're hitting. There's no runtime engine. There's no virtual machine or anything like that. In this case, for Android, it's building out the raw Java code along with a complete Eclipse project that's ready to go out of the gate to build it and modify it and expand upon it however you want to using the Android SDK, should you so choose. The same is true for iOS. It actually generates a complete Xcode project that you can pop open, use Objective-C to expand upon, and build your iOS applications, which is very cool. But how do we actually get it up and running? So let's go ahead and open, open up the Android developer tools here. So here is the default current version of the Android developer tools that are available from Google. Uh, if you just do a Google search for Android developer tools, you can get this as one single package that you can pop open and run uh, really without making any modifications. Very handy. So what you want to do is in the project view on the left inside of the Android developer tools, right click and do say import from the little uh, pop-up menu that appears. Let's go uh, general, existing projects into workspace. So we're going to import an existing project into this Android developer tool workspace. Click next. Select root directory. Let's browse to our brand new super fancy application. My new application Android. Boom. And say finish. All right. Now we're going to get an error. Oh my goodness. Now this error is actually a very simple error. Illumination Software Creator builds Android applications for Android SDK 8. Basically what that means is that it builds those applications to work very well with very old versions of Android. But the, most people don't necessarily have the SDKs for that old version. I believe it is version 2.1. Obviously that is quite old now as 4.2 is currently out. Uh, so what we're going to want to do, since I don't have that specific version of the SDK currently installed, we're going to right click on the project and go down to where it says properties and let's change the properties for the project click on Android in the left hand column here and select the version of the SDK you want to build it for it could be any version at all as long as it's after version uh, 2.1 uh, in this case I have Android 4.2.2 installed so I'm going to go ahead and hit click that check box, check box hit the apply button hit OK and away we go. Now we're still going to get some more errors. That's just because there's uh, some project issues. Well, we can right click on the project again, go down to Android Tools, and say Fix Project Properties. Boom. It's clicked. It's all done and ready to go. Now, next time we hit this Run button up here, it's going to actually run the application. You see, it's uploading and installing our application, our APK, onto the device. Let's go ahead and bring up the emulator here. It's opening my new application. Look at this. It's already got lunduke.com preloaded. Let's go ahead and click the go button. It's emulating a 3G connection, and this is on a relatively slow machine here, so it might take a moment for the web browser to pop up. But, oh, the bacon is appearing. I see bacon, and the web page is slow loading up for some reason. There it goes. All right, so now we have a complete web browser that loads bacon on top of any web page you want, and we did so... I'm just going to show you again here with that. Seriously. One, two, three little tiny semi-translucent colorful blocks. That's all it took to build an entire web browser. Complete web browser. It's fully functional. I mean, there's no back and forward buttons. Uh, there's no bookmarks. But all of that could be added. The base functionality took three blocks and a little bit of twiddling with the UI. Very, very cool. Now, of course, and I've said this before, once you're done, you can go in and edit the code however you like. This is a complete project. You notice it has a com. It's, it's fully set. It's a complete native iOS or Android application. Very, very cool. That's all there is to it. You notice we probably spent most of the time talking about, you know, how to lay out a window really nicely on Android or, you know, how to work with Eclipse for, with the Android developer tools. Very little of our time was actually spent in Illumination Software Creator. That's on purpose because Illumination Software Creator is crazy easy to use and you can get it over at lunduke.com and it's awesome and you want to use it more because it's awesome. And bacon. <laughs>